Number love. We. Okay, and we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning in for a special morning edition, afternoon edition of Off the Record, the People's Podcast with Brother Lau Muhammad. I want to give you the greetings of Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum, salam. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. It's an honor, sir. I wanted to make sure that uh, my my uh, parents and my family extend our greetings to your family and our love as well. Thank, yes, you. Sir, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you all for watching. The first question I want to know is, Brother Lau, when did you first hear the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Uh, I first uh, heard the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in 1994, the summer of 94. Mm -hmm. Uh, a brother I worked with, David 3X Muhammad, who I am so grateful and thankful to Allah for him coming into my life, uh, started working at my mail station where I worked at. Mm -hmm. And he began teaching me a little bit at a time. You know, I, I was pretty savage when he met me. So it, it took him all the two years to get me to even listen to a lecture of the minister. But when I finally listened to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in 1994, you know, First scripture popped in my head was my sheep know my voice. Yes, sir. And then I said, I got to be a FOI. And I, I've been striving to be that ever since. Praise be to Allah. And what was it um, about the brother who was teaching you that made you want to accept uh, when you finally did at the end of the two years? Brother David oh, is a very nurturing, uh, considerate and compassionate brother. He didn't just try and ram the teachings down my throat. He knew yes, that sir. I was a very knowledgeable uh, human being. And so he found uh, things that were uh, similar to the teachings that he felt that he could get me. I was very big on uh, reggae. Yes, so sir. he came at me through reggae. He found out that I was a lover of Malcolm X, even though I never really made the connection of him being a Muslim. Uh, so he talked to me about Malcolm X. He talked to me about black history. He found out that I was very knowledgeable in the Bible. So he talked to me in the Bible. And uh, so he made comparisons in my life. And not only that, to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who I was at that time extremely disrespectful of because uh, me coming out of the gang culture in Chicago, um, the moon and star was something that I couldn't gravitate for. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he had to make similarities. Like, well, you know, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is that. And I'd be like, yeah, all right, well, he get a point or two. You yes, know, sir, and, yes, uh, one of the things that finally ingratiated to me in a sense where I, I would stop being so disrespectful is our birth anniversaries on the same day. Mm, you mm. know, in, in that world, we are very big on the horoscope. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, he a Taurus and he born on the 11th. He all right with me. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, so. I'm thankful to the brother's nurturing way. He he didn't try and beat me with the teachings. He didn't try and beat me with religion. He nurtured me and made me fall in love with him and in the man that raised him. So I, I, I got to give a lot of praises to, to a lot for that brother. Yes, sir. OK, speaking of that, how because you came in under those circumstances where someone was patient with you, and and grew with you even though you was you say even disrespectful at some point how can the new generation become more patient with our people who who are disrespectful or maybe uh come in the same way are you meaning those of us who are trying to raise our people yes sir yes sir well see i'm i'm an advocate of uh relationships mm, mm. you can come to me and stick a paper in my face you can come to me and tell me this but if you're not building a relationship with me, then I have no relationship with what you're trying to bring me. Yes, sir. So because of the struggles that, that most of us go through and the misunderstandings that we have and the interference of our family who pose themselves as enemies at times of the teaching and you know the actual devil. Yes, sir. Most of our people are not even trying to hear nothing that we're saying. Absolutely. But if you build a relationship with them, like I walk. You know, I walk through the area. I don't care where I'm at. I walk, I speak, you know, and uh, at some point during that time, the people are, hey, hey, what's up, big man? And then when they find out I am in the nation of Islam, 
hey, Muhammad, what's going on? How you doing? And, and you know, I just talk to them where they are. Yes, sir. So as, as believers, we come out that same mud. Yes, so sir. we have to be able to understand and, and, and begin to uh, turn our experience, you know, in a way where we can touch our people who are experiencing the same thing. In, in, in the dope clinics, the best, uh, the best counselors that they have in those rehab centers are former drug addicts. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When I'm talking to people who came out the gang that I came out in, they'll say, well, I'm this. I tell them, you too. Mm. And then give them understanding on how the wisdom and knowledge that they have in that gang can be connected, in a sense, to the teachers. Mm. So I was the GD. Yes, sir. Growth and development. That's what we on. We on some growth and development. Yes, sir. Seven, four. Seven is completion and the four is a firm foundation. So I talked to my brothers in that language and those yes, sir. from under the five, you know, where well, they already got a touch of Islam. So you yes, sir. begin to make the relationship and the correlation between uh, the nation of Islam and the life that they're already living, you know, and I, and I believe that just helps them, you know, uh, bridge a gap between us and our people. I hope I wasn't too long-winded on Oh, that. no, but a lot, man. You teach it. Yes, sir. And I, and I appreciate that. I also want to say, uh, Sister Mariah says, as alaikum. My sister uh, Miriam says, as alaikum. And Brother Ian F. Muhammad says, as alaikum. Thank you all for continuing to watch the People's Podcast this afternoon. Please Brother return Lat my love and greeting. Yes, sir. My next question for you is, when you came into the mosque in 1994, could you give us, uh, set the scene for us of how it was when you first walked in? Who was the people training you? Uh, did you go into a squad or were you in a secretary? Did you, did you go straight to the military? Like, how, how did that work in 1994? Well, I actually didn't come in the mosque until 95. 94 is when I, I accepted the teaching. But yes, sir. 95, we were in the spirit of the Million Man March. Mm -hmm. So my first Savior's Day, I had my wife at my side. She had not accepted yet. We had not, we weren't married yet. And, uh, you know, I was all in. I'm a soldier. I, I gave the devil eight and a half years in his military. Mm. I spent almost 20 of my 30 years at that time in the street in that military. Yes, so sir. being a soldier has always been something that's been a part of my life and a passion. And it, I just remember, man, the love that I felt from the believers. And my wife, she kind of felt like, you know, well, they not treat me like they treat you. And, you know, she wasn't dressed like an MGT. So yes, you know, I just said, well, look how you dress, sister. So, you, know, <laughs> you know, but my wife, you know, when after that, we came to Jesus Saves, which was part two. Mm. And oh, she was in the acceptance line. Crazy. So uh, after that, you know, I'm in processing. The first person I met, may Allah be forever pleased with him, was Brother Khalil. Mm, mm. Brother yes, Khalil, sir. longtime soldier, he was the person who sat at the sign-in desk when I came in. Mm -hmm. I already thought I knew everything. You know, I was a little upset about having to do 18 weeks in processing at that time, because I'm ready to get started, you know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But uh, Brother Khalil was such a loving and nurturing brother. Oh, brother, it's okay, you know, and he, he calmed me down and I sat in the class and uh, the first person that taught processing was uh, Minister Michael, who mm -hmm. I happened to go to high school with. OK, and, OK. Uh, you know, I didn't have any fond memories of him because we were on different sides of the fence. <laughs> yes, brother came into the mosque. I mean, he came back to the Julian is, was the high school I went to. And yes, sir. he began to teach our class in, mm. in 82. That's when he had graduated. Mm. And so there were things that he said that stuck with me for over 10 years. Mm. You know, and I found them in other uh, studies. And so when I, I walked in process and he was there, I was like, man, brother, we went to high school together. You remember me? He was like, no, sir. I said, mm. well, I remember you, man. And you did so-and-so, so-and-so. And I was like, man, I wish I had came in then because I wouldn't have did all the things I did over 10 years. He said, no, brother, it was something that a lot of desire for you to learn. Yes, sir. Out in the streets. And so now that you're here, you bring what you learn and you share with your people. So the spirit was very high at that time, man. And then uh, I went from another part of processing. Michael Eighteen X was, to me, one of the best processing teachers that I've seen in my 25 years in the mosque, mm. along with Brother Quinn Cedric. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I'm not a big man on men, but I was so in love with that brother that I 
I had to tell my wife about this man. And she was like, man, brother, you okay? And I'm like, man, this <laughs> you know? So, I, I mean, I, I came in at a time when the spirit was high. My first lieutenant in al Fatiha was Brother Broderick, who would have us in our, uh, we would have our uh, squad meetings at 10 o'clock at night on a mm. Friday. Mm. I was a, a letter carrier. Plus, I used to do mail pickup in the mailboxes, so I would have to be at work at 4 o'clock in the morning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so that was a new idea, to be up till 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning and then have to go straight to work. Yes, sir. But it was a, a necessary adjustment, you know. But I enjoyed all that we did. I enjoyed the soldiering aspect. I enjoyed the military drill. I enjoyed just the military decorum because I came out of that. Yes, you know, sir. and I'm I'm a I'm OCD, so there's certain aspects of my life that were already uh, fashioned in that manner. Mm. So, I, man, I, I I still love it to this day. We we have a lot of work to do because there are more emotions involved in the men right now as far as duty. Yes, but sir. you know we're we're at a time, brother, that you know I believe some of this is necessary but we absolutely have to get out of our emotions. Like the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan taught us in study guide 18. Yes, sir. Rise yes, above sir. emotion into the thinking of God. Yes, sir. And yes, I just sir. believe that, you know, the spirit that we had to be successful for the Million Man March, we need to get that same spirit back because man, our people are suffering. While we have a lot of in-house bickering over emotional things that if we would set the emotions to the side, I believe we could overcome all of that and become successful again, especially considering we have a lot of naysayers and uh, disgruntled believers who are speaking against the minister and the nation at this time. You know, all of that is to me because they they just in their feelings. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Pardon me, I don't, don't want to go too far on that. Yes, sir. No, sir. No, sir. That's good. Anything that I don't think the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan would be pleased with. Yes, sir. Okay, wonderful. And thank you, Brother um, Lau, for your transparency. I want to thank um, Sister Shanta, who says I'm like, um, Sister Naima says I'm like, um, uh, Brother uh, Kill Gum says I'm like, um, Brother Ian e says Mighty Quinn, Top Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Brother Lau, what branch of the military did you come out of, sir? Uh, I, I joined the United States Air Force in uh, June of 1984 after I graduated. Uh, I went in as a security specialist. Uh, which is basically just a grunt. Mm. Uh, my first intentions were for aircraft mechanic or telecommunications, but your brother had just gotten out of a lot of trouble. Mm. And he did a fifth year in high school, you know, so he knew that his, his biological mother, who was deceased at that time, you know, that she would be pleased if I made something positive of myself. Yes, I, I had a dream not long before I graduated that I would either end up dead in the penitentiary or strung out on drugs somewhere. So mm -hmm. when I came out of that dream, I remembered that I wanted to join the Air Force. So I graduated June 24th, 1984 on a Sunday. June 25th, I was in the uh, MEP, I mean, I was at the recruiter's office. Uh, June 26th, they were offering the test, which uh, I took on that day. I scored off the chart the following week. They told me I could have any job in the Air Force I wanted. But the two jobs that I really wanted, one was a pilot. I needed college. I said, man, I'm done with school. Uh, then I said telecommunications. They said 18 months, delayed enlistment. Aircraft mechanic, 18 months, delayed enlistment, and security police. So I love guns, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I said, okay, I'll do the security police. I left within 90 days of me uh, signing up. I got sworn in and I was out of there. Mm. Uh, from there, I went to uh, my boot camp in Lakeland, I mean, uh, Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas. Yes, sir. Where I was a security police officer. Yeah. Hold on, excuse me. I'm sorry, brother. Oh, no, uh, yes, sir. No, you fine. Where I did my security police training. From there, I went to a, a, a course called Air Base Ground Defense or ABGD. I became a M60 specialist, mm. uh, which was my specialist weapon. And, you know, I was prepared to kill many enemies yes, sir. You know, for this nation. Yes, sir. Uh, 
but as time grew on, you know, the racism got to a point where I, I no longer desired to be there. Mm -hmm. And even though I was a, a top soldier at that time, I scored in the top, uh, uh, the top eight percent in some of my CDC trainings in the entire United States Air Force. I knew the uh, Uniform Code of Military Justice, which was the law, because I was a police officer as well. Yes, sir. You know, in that regard, as far as the Air Force. Yes, sir. And uh, I knew how to exist and keep my identity. Mm, mm, you know, I, mm. I cussed out and beat up a lot of people. <laughs> you know, I stayed out of trouble. And when I got to that point where I no longer desired to be there, then I separated in uh, 1992. Okay, yes, sir. Excellent. And I want to thank you all for continuing to watch this great interview. My next question is, Brother Lau, what was it like meeting the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan for the first time? Oh, uh, brother, <laughs> if there's anybody that's a rock star to me, and I've been around a lot of famous people, yes, sir. I even know some personally. Yes, sir. You know, I, I grew up with some you yes, know, sir. professional athletes and things of that nature. But you know, I love them, but there's only one rock star in my life. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That I get goosebumps, that I'm afraid to be around, that I'm nervous to be around. Yes, you know, sir. Who I believe he is and in the Hello. divinity of that man. So Hello. Hello. when I first met him, he just gave me that beautiful smile that he usually does. And he says, assalamu alaikum. And, and I returned the greetings. And over the years, you know, I've been on post, blessed to be you know, in vicinity of him. And from time to time, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan would look at me and he'd punch me in the stomach a few times, you yes, know, sir, yes, sir. at that time, I don't think he knew I was boxing. Mm. Uh, but, you know, he'd say, oh, you got a little something under there. So <laughs> it's just an honor and a pleasure to be around him, not to say that I even know him personally, but I'm, I'm thankful to Allah that I have had the encounters with him one a very positive one where he named my daughter, mm, Naima. Mm, mm. Uh, you know, and I'm thankful to Allah for that. The second one was a very negative one in the death of my son. Yes, sir. But he never said anything negative about it. You know, he was always very positive and always guided and directed me to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I mean, to, to the most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the God who came in the person of Master Fahd Muhammad. Yes, sir. So I can I can't uh, I can only say, brother, that meeting him at any time to this day in 25 years, I still get goosebumps about being around him. And I've been on post around him for at least 20 years. Praise be to Allah. Excellent. And and welcome slimes to Shante. She made sure I corrected that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for that. OK, my next question is, where, was there ever a time where you uh, especially in the 90s, uh, when you may have feared for your life and you had to overcome that fear because of the climate of the attack on the Nation of Islam at that time? Oh, man, that's that's a kind of hard question because, you know, all of us have fear. Yes, sir. And we're taught that we should challenge our fear. But I just think that, and I'd like to believe that the, the training and the lifestyle that I live uh, throughout my years prior to the nation I pray to Allah that he blessed me to be the soldier that I think I am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So even though certain fears come up when I'm doing what I'm doing, you know, it's like a person that I haven't seen in a while, out of sight, out of mind. Yes, sir. <laughs> disconnected from it. Yes, you sir. Know? And then I I try and, and pray to the God, like I said, that he blessed me to be the soldier that I think I am. And that if it, if it comes down to that, that he blesses me to shed much blood in, in honor of him. Allow but I do want to come out of that uh, encounter unscathed yes, and sir. able to do it again. So. Praise be to Allah. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, it's wonderful. Sir. And on that note, I want to thank the sponsors of this, uh, the first part, that's just the first part but loud, of this podcast, is Supreme Men Clothing in St. Louis, Missouri, um, 10835 West Flores Florescent Avenue. The phone number is 314-528-555. I thank you very much for your sponsorship of this podcast. Um, also, um, here we go. Supreme Spring Water. Um, if you all need some water, my sister's second children's book, 
ABC I Love Me, and the first one is on uh, ABC I Love Me on Amazon. Hey, I need I need two of them for my grandson. Okay, yes, I'll be sure to tell her. Also, my father would get very upset if I do not tell him that he has a new book called A Soldier in the Movement of Christ, and it sold out very quick at um, Savior's Day at Vending. You can get this on abdushreefmohammed.com. And my second book, which is a chip, my first one was No Father, No Excuse. My second one is Cleopatra. It is on Amazon. And if you all have a business that you would like me to sponsor, J Imagination on Cash App, I will be proud to promote your business on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you all very much. Okay, brother, uh, like, subscribe, and share on YouTube as well. Brother Lau, my next question to you is, what has, um, how important has being a husband been to you in this work? How important has being a husband been to me in this work? Yes, sir. Man, <laughs> that's kind of hard because uh, I, I got a lot to work. I got a lot of work to do on that husband piece, but a lot yes, <laughs> yes, he's blessed me and my wife to be together 28 years as of Saturday on the 22nd Praise of me, February. And we're going to do a, uh, our silver anniversary renewing of our vows on the 25th. The, the 25 years Great. on the 12th of May this year. Excellent. But um, man, being a husband is it, it, hard, you know, in, in the devil's world. You know, yes, if you don't have God at the root of your relationship. Yes, sir. I, I'm not the easiest person to get along with. I, I don't know how my wife does it, yes, sir. <laughs> you know, yes, sir. but I try and remain friends. And to me, that's the most important aspect of a marriage as being friends, because male and female, husband and wife, we're going to fall short in the relationship. Yes, and sir. if Allah is not the center of the relationship and you're not a friend, then there's no way that you can maintain to me a healthy relationship. Now, when my wife and I joined the nation, you know, uh, I was gone all the time, mm. but she had enough love in her for me to make my children love me to death. So I, I'm assuming that I was being a good husband at some point. Praise uh, me we've had some very rocky times, losing yes, our home, regaining a new home, uh, losing our home and regaining another home. Yes, sir. Uh, but she's been there with me the whole time, the death of my son, she's been there to me the whole time. So to me, being a husband since marriage is 50% of our religion, according to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Yes, sir. Is absolutely necessary in this journey. When you're fighting the devil, man, and you got to go home alone, I can, I, I can tell you from experience going home to a family that's hell. So I can only imagine what it's like going <laughs> home and you by yourself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, I, I, I tease quite a few brothers around in the nation, you know, jokingly, but seriously. You know, you need a wife, man. You've been in the mosque 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. You got a, a word from your father. He used to call a sister stress. Yes, sir. <laughs> you, you got a sister stress in your life or a brother stress, but you got yes, to do something about that, man. Yes, sir. So being a husband is absolutely necessary. And then to be a father and produce children, as the yes, minister sir. said, that comes into that that you give your life to. Yes, sir. You're not going to be a good father to me if you're not going to be a good husband. Yes, sir. You know, yes, sir. you set an example for your men, children, and your women, children, as a husband and how you treat their mother. Yes, sir. So, you know, my children know, I may not like my wife at times, but I, I <laughs> I'm a very hard man yes, sir. to her and to them, but yes, they know sir. I love them and I, and, I, and I kill a rock for them. Praise be to so I do my best to provide for them mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally, and economically. Yes, sir. So uh, there's no greater job that you can have than to be a husband to a newborn nation to help produce family that will produce nation. Yes, sir. Praise be to our excellent answer. And thank you all Praise for watching. My sister Miriam says happy anniversary. Sister Aisha from Chicago says happy anniversary. That's beautiful as well, sir. My, my, I want to say that uh, Street Premier, my brother, my brother Rashad and his business partner Jamal do video production and editing. And they have done a lot of music videos and they are always working. So if you need some video editing, street premiere, Instagram them, Facebook and Twitter as well. My next question is, 
working, um, I've known you ever since I, you know me and my family since we were younger. Um, what was it like working around my father in the 90s? How, how was that? Man, your father was a general. Mm. I, I wasn't that close to him. I was like a low level lieutenant at that time. Okay, yes, sir. Uh, and, and he had a, a staff of men that were around him at all times, but your your father's presence commanded. Uh, he, he had a commanding spirit, which I love. It was hard sometimes, but <laughs> hard. And, and I remember one of, one of my first FOI classes where he, he taught in our class. And I talk about this all the time because, you know, most of us ask, how's mom? Yes, sir. And so at the end of the class, he would say, how many of you spoke to your mother this week? You know, and he would go through that and almost every hand would go up. Yes, sir. He would say, well, how many of you all spoke to your father in the, in the past 30 days? Mm. You know, most of the class would go up. And he'd say, you know, in two weeks, then it would only have. Then in, in the past week, it may have been about 10. And I'll just remember, man, because before my mother passed, my biological mother passed, in May of 1980, when I was 13, mm. she had just told me the week before she passed who my father was. Mm. And she had always promised me from a little age that she would tell me when I got older. Yes, sir. And when she uh, uh, was diagnosed with cancer, me being a smart little deceiver at about <laughs> nine years old, I was like, okay, well, you got to tell me who my dad is before you die. Yes, sir. Thank so that was, that was a promise that my mother made to me that she would make. And so the week before she passed, she told me who my father was. Mm. But I, I was a, a shy child when it came to talking to people. I wasn't as talkative as I am now. Yes, sir. And uh, so I, I was around my father because he was the pastor of our church. Mm. But I didn't know how to go to him and say, my mother told me you're my father. Is it true? So I mm. just hung around him mm. and waited for him to... Say, uh, say that he was or, you know, but he never did. Mm. So um, as time went on, I was very upset that uh, this man did not really take an active role in my life after my mother passed. Yes. So anyway, sitting in that FOI class while your father was saying these, asking these questions, you know, I was using them expletives in my head. <laughs> <laughs> you know, N word, and you know, yes, I wouldn't talk to that bastard, you know, if yes, he was sir. on yes, fire, sir. you know, that yes, type sir. of thing. Yes, sir. But then he said this He said that you should be thankful and grateful to Allah for just the seed of that man, because if it were not for his seed, you would not exist. Yes, he sir. Said it wouldn't matter if that man was a wino on the block. Yes, sir. It was his seed that Allah utilized to make you. And I broke out in tears for maybe the fourth time in 15 years, mm. almost 20 years. Mm. So I hold that dear to my heart. Your, your father's a very beautiful man to me. Praise be to know? Allah. And uh, I'm, I'm thankful to the things that I did learn from him yes, in that short tenure of time. He also uh, blessed me because we were over what was called the South Suburban Study Group and I was the FOI in charge. Mm. And I worked hard. And, he blessed me and, and the other staff that was on that in that study group to be considered uh, amongst the laborers. Crazy. So as there were laborers meetings, and he get he granted me a captain's certificate, even though I was still a lieutenant. Crazy so but I'm in a captain's meeting, and you know, so there there are little things that he did, even like on Father's Day, I think Father's Day of 1996, I think it was 96 or 97, where he gave the the keynote address that Sunday at the mosque, mm. and, and I was asked to bear witness what Allah, Islam has done for me. Mm, mm. And so there are little things that, that he did in my life, you know, that I'm grateful to Allah for him for, and just the, the big smile and the, the warm greetings that he gives me every time that he sees me. I think that we've grown closer since he's been out of Chicago than we were when he was here. Uh, he was just the shining light in the city of Chicago that, you know, I, I, I got to, you know, get a little light brightness from. But, yes, you know, it's just, you know, as I reflect more and more on the, 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 uh, the times that we were around together, it just makes me love and respect him even more. And I'm thankful to Allah that 
you know, I had a man like him in my life as well. Praise be to Allah. Well, speaking of him, after after he was no longer the Supreme Captain, uh, now the new Supreme Captain, well, not new, but the Supreme Captain after him, who's been there for over 20 years, uh, student Cap uh, Supreme Captain Mustafa, Mustafa Farrakhan. And ever since I can remember, I've seen you like securing him and making sure that he was okay. Uh, first of all, how did you get to become, uh, you know, be around him and what made you stay to protect him to make sure that nobody harmed him? Whoa, that's a long story. We got time. Yes, sir. <laughs> of course. Well, in, uh, as I mentioned, uh, when I got the captain certificate and myself and at that time, student minister Kareem Mohammed, mm. uh, we were doing big things in Harvey, sitting down with the then mayor at that time, Nick Graves, you know, and uh, there were a lot of street vendors at that time, but he kicked everybody off the street, but the FOI. Mm, so mm. we were the only ones permitted to work the corners in the city of Harvey at that time. And so we were doing good things, but you know, uh, I experienced a lot of negativity mm. at that time. And uh, I ended up being relieved of my post uh, at that time. I still don't know exactly why, but a lot permitted it. And then uh, I began to be berated. Mm. And in, in my opinion, disrespected by some. And uh, at that time, if you remember, I was the uh, head security man for Brother Ishmael. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. And uh, I was on post with him one day and I, I got whispered in my ear that I was not worthy to hold that post and I was properly relieved. Yeah. Uh, but these people didn't bring me in the nation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They can't get me out of it. Yes, sir. And so I, I went through these particular trials and, and my beautiful brother, Brother Benny, when he was in charge of security for the Supreme Captain, your father at yes, that sir. time, you know, he took note of the work that I did. And so he constantly utilized me, you know, to secure the palace and these special details. But uh, anyway, I was given instruction, which I, I felt was a bad instruction to, it was Savior's Day to be at uh, the McCormick place of that year at six o'clock in the morning. Mm. And I was the only one there. Mm. No one showed up. And when Brother Benny saw me, he was like, Brother Lyle, what are you doing? <laughs> yes, that, that's a weak imitation of <laughs> you, know, you know everybody think they can imitate brother Benny because he's yes, a sir. legend you know yes sir but uh I said I was told to be here such and such a time and he said all right well I want you with me mm. and he took me and put me on security with brother Mooster mm. at that time so that was Savior's Day 19 uh I mean not 19 but 2000 mm. And I've been blessed to be with him ever since. It's mm. an honor to mm. sacrifice and to even give my life for my brother. Yes, sir. And so I'm, I'm thankful to Allah that he he utilized Brother Benny to do something that I had already seen in my mind. Anyway, when I joined the nation, I desired to be around the minister. And, and at that time, I didn't know who Brother Mustafa was. I just used to like his spirit. I'm like, man, who is that? That yes, dude sir. behind the minister, you know, that he's real. I, I want to be around that cat because, yes, you know, his spirit is is the same as mine, you know. And, wow. I, and I just felt that he would do a lot of pain for the minister. And then when I found out that he was his son, you know, I fell in love with him even more. But in these 20 years, he is so in love with the idea of his father being the, and let me say it the other way. He's so in love with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan being the man of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And his father. Yes, sir. That I, everything that comes out of his mouth to me is something that he has learned, not just in his study, but from his father himself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has raised to me a great one. And he Absolutely. is a brother that loves the brotherhood and the brotherhood is always on his mouth. I very rarely ever hear him say anything that is not connected to the upliftment of the FOI and our people. Yes, sir. So it's an honor to serve a man like that. It's an honor for me to serve a, his family the way that I do. And, and I'm thankful that Allah permits it 
and that he permits me to be around him as long as I have. Did I answer your question? A absolutely, you did. Excellent. going on. Oh, uh, yes, sir. About and thank how, I, how I love that brother. Praise be to Allah. And we love him as well. And thank you all for watching on uh, this episode of the People's Podcast this afternoon. My next, I have two more questions for you, but allow if you mind, if you don't mind. No, sir. My, my, my next yeah. question is, how have you been so committed all of these years since 1995 to now? What advice would you give to younger people who could uh, take take something from you of the spirit or of your faith to keep, you know, staying dedicated for so long? All praise is due to Allah. Uh, I just never take my eye off the minister. I, I'm not perfect. Uh, I'm, I have a lot of faults. Yes, sir. But I try and keep the minister because he's the example. Yes, sir. I try and keep the words of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in my mind. I try and keep my study. Even though I don't, I'm not on that prayer rug like I should, it says that the greatest force against indecency and evil is the remembrance of Allah. Allah so every time I cuss, which is a lot, I'm in prayer. <laughs> the minister said that, oh, Allah is a prayer. So, oh, Allah is one of the <laughs> most prevalent things that come out of my mouth. Yes, sir. But I'm, I'm constantly in prayer in that manner. I'm constantly studying, you know, even if it's just a word or two, to keep in tune with the man of God. Then I try and do work. Now, I'm lazy, just like everybody else. Yes, sir. You know, I have emotional issues just like everybody else. But but I thank Allah that he keeps me in this work because uh, I know without it, I'm dead. I know what I was when Brother David reached down in the grave daily for two years to help pull me out, you know, and, and, and I know what it takes to keep me out. So even at the passing of my son, we had a believers that night, believers meeting that night. Yes, sir. At the funeral. I could have wallowed in the hotel room because we didn't want to go back in the house. Yes, sir. I could have uh, stayed depressed for the next six months. Anybody said I had my right to do that, but I knew that if I didn't get and stay connected to the work, not only would I have hurt many people, you know, I would have lost myself in that. So yes, I was sitting right in the crowd with the rest of the believers because I'm a believer. Allah, Not the best of believers, but I am a believer. So yes, sir. no matter what trial you go through, any of us, you got arguments at work. Do you quit your job because you had an argument with a co-worker, a disagreement right. with a That's boss, right. That's quit right. crying. Do you have That's problems right. with your wife at home? Uh, I'm sure you do. Quit yes. crying. Do you have disagreements with your children and your other family members? Have you been in traffic and somebody cussed you out in traffic? Do you stop living? No. Get to work. Keep working. Do what we can to uplift our people and to make our nation mighty because we can't do it without one another. That's right. And it's just my belief that, you know, a lot of people say that Allah doesn't need us, that the nation doesn't need us. OK, it may not need us, but the nation would not be what it is without each and every one of us in it. Allah Akbar. Furthermore, whatever you have in your heart to give, give. Now, some of my leadership might get mad at me. <laughs> if you can't make a meeting and they bugging you about making a meeting, don't get upset. Stick to your guns. I'm, I'm not going to be there, brother. But give your time when you can. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I, that's how I advise brothers. I, I'm not at every meet. But if you can make Sunday, be there Sunday. Keep your poisonous attitude if you're upset. Keep that to yourself. Get to the work. Don't come yes, to the mosque and think you should just sit down. Come to the mosque and get to work because the meeting is about our people. They yes, should sir. see our spirit yeah. along with great teaching from these students of the Honorable Minister Lewis Farrakhan. Yes, sir. So I said, if you're in a parking lot, so what? Get in the parking lot, knock them 30 minutes out, a 30-minute rotation, man, and do it with a smile on your face. Yes, sir. So to me, that's how you stay 25 years. And I pray a lot that he keep me another 25 years and another after that and another after that. I don't yes, want sir. nothing but this. Praise and I'm not, I'm not going to claim to be perfect because I'm very flawed. Yes, sir. But I'm striving to be one with God. I'm striving to be a servant of his, and I'm striving for his pleasure. So I don't care who don't like me. I don't care who don't want to be around me. You're not going to whoop me, so quit playing. <laughs> like yes, this is what I do. 
Yes, sir. You know what I'm yes, saying? Sir. So yes, that, sir. That's just how I see it. And, and I can do it on any level, but just do it with intelligence and, and hold fast. So I, I pray to a lot that he blessed me to be more prayerful, more dutiful, more submissive to him. I pray to a lot that he blessed me to be firm and steadfast in my faith and in my belief in him and in the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. These are, these are my confessions to myself and to my God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And if you're not doing that, then I don't think you're going to do one year. Yes, sir. Because you're going to find a problem. You're going to trip over something. You're going to stumble over something. And that'll be your excuse to walk away. But the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said to walk away from this is to abort yourself. Yes, sir. And you know what we do with abortions. We throw that away. Yes, sir. So don't throw yourself away because of, you know, some disappointment. That's what happened to Iblis. Yes, sir. Disappointed. So if you're disappointed and you'll walk and turn your back on God, then you have taken on, as far as I'm concerned, the spirit of Iblis. I don't want Iblis spirit. That's right. I want to be like the messenger of Allah, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, and the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. Praise be to Allah. Excellent. And excellent teaching, brother. I never heard you speak like this before. Okay, excellent. Um, so this he said, this is a great show. Thank you, Sister Shante. My sister Miriam says, strength, all praise be to Allah. My sister Naima says, all praise be to Allah. It's real strength. Sister Shante says, yes, sir. Praise be to Allah. Thank you all for watching. My last question uh, for you, brother Lyle, is what do you want your legacy to be? Man, well, I want to be like the minister. Yes, sir. I would love for that to be my legacy. Now, if it's Allah's will, then all praise is due to Allah. Other than that, I just want to be a good brother. Yes, sir. Allah has blessed me, you know, to uh, my son, Jalil Fahim Muhammad, who passed yes, away, you know, nine years ago. Yes, sir. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said that he was an angel, the protecting angel of the nation of Islam. Yes, sir. To me, that's a heaven of a legacy right there. Yes, me. sir. Yes, sir. Old Lyle Harper off the of 93rd and Wentworth, Princeton Park, you know, what I thought GD for life, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> to come yes, into the army of God. Yes, sir. Where I'm not judged by anything that I did in my past unless I continue to hold on to him. To bless me and my wife to produce a child, you know him as loving as he was. Yes, sir. Absolutely. He didn't go into a room when he did not change the spirit of those who came in contact with him. Absolutely. And even though he had uh, he had uh, bruises on his brain, so he had some developmental issues, people could hardly tell yes, sir. when he was in their presence. Yes, sir. So to me, that's a heaven of a legacy. My uh, When the minister named my daughter, Naima, yes, sir. gave me the name in the laborers meeting, and he said that she would be a blessing. No, he said that that child is a blessing and that child will be a blessing to you. Praise I me. always wanted a daughter. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The minister gave me such a beautiful name. That's a legacy to me. Yes, sir. A beautiful child. But she desires to be a doctor from the time she was five because of the medical issues that her brother had. Yes, sir. She wanted to be the one to fix his brain. Praise so to if Allah blesses her to be successful, that's a legacy to me. My yes, son, sir. Hakeem, you know, he's a, he was a three-time state champion as a young as a young fellow in boxing. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, sir. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said that he was going to do great things in the name of his brother who passed yes. away. Yes, sir. To me, that would be a legacy. I was blessed to uh, connect with a daughter of mine that I met her mother in the military. And the young lady and I did uh, the DNA test on... Sunday will be one year. Mm. And when we got the results, she's my daughter, 31 years old. And by she and I coming in contact and myself and my wife sharing the teachings with her, and she's a highly intelligent young lady. She graduated on Saturday. Praise the so, uh, yes, sir. To me, that's a legacy. Yes, sir. I've yes, sir. Two beautiful grandsons by my daughter. Yes, sir. That she named without any influence from me. One of them, my oldest, he was born July 4th. His name is Michael Eli. I yes, thought sir. it was, but she calls him Eli. I thought that was short for Elijah. But you yes, know, sir. Eli is just the, you know, it comes from the name Elijah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My, my youngest grandson, who's three, his name is Malachi. 
Praise be to Allah. Which refers to the messenger of God. Absolutely. In the very final. So that's a legacy. I, you know what? I can't complain. But if Allah blessed me to do things greater than that, I've got a few people that got their ex because of me. Praise that's be to legacy. Allah. I, I, I can't ask for more, man, from a brother who, who come up out the mud and, and, and striving to do better than he ever did before, brother. Yes, sir. Okay, wonderful. I want to thank you all for watching. Everybody saying teach, teach, praise be to Allah, excellent teaching. I just want to thank you again. Thank you all for watching. I want to thank you, but allow personally for always being kind to me and being protective over myself and my family and over all of the believers, but allow for always having a serious, I mean, we know you're serious and you're strong, but a spirit of love. So I appreciate that, but allow we love you and your family. We thank uh, Yolanda and your children for their sacrifice as well. And it's an honor that you would come on our uh, show, my podcast, have a conversation with us today. Man, man, brother Joshua, I, I've always loved you as a young soldier growing up looking at you. And, and I'm thankful to Allah that you even invited me on your podcast. You know? And uh, if there's anything of good that I said, I pray that it can touch the hearts and minds of some more believers so that we can get stronger and stronger in this fight because the flood is on. Yes, sir. They've been speaking against the minister as soon as he closed the lecture. And even though a, a brother, he cautioned me because I I responded to something that someone said about the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan on Facebook. Uh, then a brother came on and said, well, the minister's not dealing with them or something to that matter or manner. And I, and I said, well, you know, that's for him. <laughs> that's for him. We would not have books. We would not be taught that we should be able to defend the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So come on, believers. Yes, sir. Let's stop letting these naysayers spew poison out against the messenger of Allah. Let's get in our study, in our prayer, and in these streets and defend the man that gave us life. Yes, sir. Necessary that we give or lose our life, then all praise is due to Allah. Wow. But it is our job to defend him because you know in them last days Jesus did not defend himself against the Jews of Pontius Pilate. Yes, right. To those whose lives that he saved and those of us who he resurrected from the dead. It's our responsibility to get his back, his front and his flank, cover down on the man of God, cover down on the man of right and, and defend him the best way that we can. And if you can't do it, you got a brother who can. Praise May Allah continue Allah. to keep and bless you and all of us. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, sir. You're Thank you all for watching.